God's peace between us. Again, welcome to worship here at uh, First Congregational United Church of Christ. Yes, it is the final Sunday of the, of the year of 2015, but it is the first Sunday in our Christmas season. Um, the, those two Sundays that come uh, within our Christmas season, between Christmas and Epiphany. So thank you. Uh, welcome to you, and thank you for being and joining here with us this morning. It is our practice to sign in to the red pads that are found at the end of your pew, and if you would do that and just pass it along, we're so grateful to know um, those who have joined us here this morning. I have a number of announcements. Actually, it's not a huge number because things are changing. It's kind of a, a day in which uh, we regroup and begin to look ahead slowly, slowly, giving ourselves a chance to breathe. But I do want us to turn to page seven, please. And uh, the first thing, uh, thank you to everyone for all of the poinsettias that were contributed that adorn the sanctuary. You'll notice that there are fewer. If you were here Christmas Eve, you'll notice there are many less than there were that evening uh, because they have been delivered um, to those who um, are special friends or members who are unable to be with us. And so they are now enjoying that beauty as well. So thank you to each and every one of you who have made that contribution. Tomorrow, uh, on the 28th, the Red Cross Blood Drive will be here. And it's from 1 to 7 p.m. and it's down in uh, Jones Hall. So if you um, have not had a chance to uh, be a blood donor for a while, tomorrow would be a great opportunity to do that. The, uh, Imagine Wednesdays, we'll have this coming Wednesday off and we'll begin again a week from Wednesday on January the 6th, and that is the chili cook-off, so you need to be looking through your recipe boxes or maybe that secret recipe that's in your head and make sure you've got all your ingredients. And uh, bring a crock pot of chili and we'll be having a, a friendly competition on that evening. Um, the last thing that, no, the next thing that I want to mention, and that is the notice that's in the gray box on bottom of page seven. That is your official notice given in within the time frame that everyone is to have to be notified of an annual meeting. So you can just pay attention to that and see the time and the date um, for the annual meeting and as well as a couple of items that will be uh, voted upon at the meeting that day. Then um, finally, you'll, you uh, have, if there are hymns, Christmas carols, uh, Christmas hymns that we have not sung or something that is a favorite of yours, you're going to have a chance to choose that and let us know the hymn that comes after the sermon. That's actually going to be a little bit of a Christmas carol or a hymn sing. So you'll be able to choose that. And we'll do that for several songs, a couple of verses. So it's giving you a heads up so you can be ready for that. 
Are there other announcements that we need to be made aware of right now? Okay, if not, then um, let's turn to page six and uh, look at our uh, prayer concerns and celebrations. There is one update, and that is that uh, uh, Betty Nyquist passed away in the morning of Christmas Day, and our sympathies do go um, to uh, Linda, Poppy, and Betty's entire family. Um, in that loss. Um, the service, memorial service, is will be planned, but it will take place a little while later. Um, we'll make sure that all of you have the information as it is as it develops. But um, truly in this day we hold uh, Betty's family in our prayers. Might there be other prayers of uh, concern or a celebration to share today? Yes, Bill. We've been praying for Kelly Weiss, yes. our niece, and she was at the brain tumor, and the doctors over this last weekend, they took her out of the ICU unit, which is a very big step for that, and now she'll be in the hospital for a little while, but she's making miraculous progress, and I'm confident the medicine world is great, but I know the prayers also have a big part to do with it. Thank you all. Yes, and we're very grateful to hear that news because it's not as often that we get to celebrate that kind of news, so thank you. That would be Kelly uh, Weiss, that we've been praying for, that uh, she had a, a surgical procedure for brain tumor and has been released from ICU, so and a, a great improvement. Thank you. All right. Are there others this morning? If not, then um, let us... Now prepare ourselves as we call ourselves into a time of confession. <laughs> Scriptures promise that God will make all things new. As God makes the year new, may we also be made new by God's love and forgiveness in Christ Jesus. For it is in this love that we are a forgiven people. Amen.
A Psalm of Praise, 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy winds fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals, all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his glory is above the earth and heavens. He has raised up a horn for his people, Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord.
A scripture reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians, chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. May God's blessing be upon the reading, the hearing, and the living of this holy word. Amen. This day, the first Sunday after Christmas, is often dubbed a low Sunday, and not just by those who are worship leaders. There tends to be fewer people in church, for one thing, more importantly, though, the sense of it being low is also the result of the excitement that gradually increased through Christmas, through Christmas Day. And it has begun to subside as the singing of favorite Christmas songs ends. Some may even think, thank goodness, enough of the Christmas music already. The Christmas tree in many homes is void of its packages. Favorite Christmas meals, goodies, and gatherings are memories saved for another year. For many people, it is a time to withdraw and recoup for the new year ahead. The mood demands a move beyond the familiar sights and sounds of the holiday season towards getting ready for the coming year. Today is the second day of the Christmas season in the church. The song which has brought merriment to many a Christmas gathering, the 12 days of Christmas, is about this time, from Christmas Day to Epiphany. It is a time to stop all of the busyness of the holiday season and take stock of everything that we have seen and heard. Ponder them in our hearts and minds like Mary. And give thanks to God with every cell of our being. We need to celebrate the ending of a crazy December schedule and the return to a more quiet time of spiritual nurture. That's why we are singing upbeat and joyful and forward-looking hymns this morning. That is another reason to share a cookie, to drink coffee, and to fellowship with each other, to greet each other in the spirit of the incarnation, the peace of Christ, born in light of the life-giving news of God's glory and love come to earth. We are to claim our own glory as God's beloved children who have been awakened awakened to the wonders of divine love and wisdom. Psalm 148 is exactly what is called for on this low Sunday, a day given as a gift to us with its invitation to gather as a grateful and faithful people, to become one with all of creation in praising and worshiping God as together we seek strength for the journey to come, though we know that it will not be easy for some. All the more reason to prepare ourselves. 
The interesting realization in this psalm is that humans, no matter their age or gender, are but one part of creation that is called to praise God. It includes things on earth and in heaven above. It includes wild animals, creeping things, and flying birds. It includes angels and heavenly beings. It even includes inanimate things, such as the moon, the sun, and stars, as well as mountains and hills, plants, and weather, and weather. It is reminiscent of the creation story itself, in which God creates all that exists and sees that it is good. Have you noticed? Have you seen the ways in which the world and the universe is praising God? December has been an exciting month to watch the heavens as five, yes, five planets lit up the sky with their steady, bright light. Mercury, the lone evening planet star, and Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn in the early mornings. One evening as I drove home from Sioux Falls after dark, I saw two falling stars which came from the Geminid meteor showers. Magnificent. As the clouds rolled away on Christmas Eve, there to behold was a full, creamy yellow moon with its face being crossed with a wispy cloud. That hasn't happened since 1977, and it won't happen again. I'm sorry. Yes, 1977, and it won't happen again until 2034. Marvelous to behold. It was possible to picture the Magi as I'm driving along, imagining them crossing the many miles in search of the promised one as they followed the movement of a heavenly body. Christmas morning revealed a beauty that your eyes have to see to believe. Frost like icing on empty bushes, grass, trees, and clotheslines that gave a wondrous look to a wintry landscape. And what added to the holiness of the scene was the silence, the pure silence. No South Dakota wind, a miracle. Can you hear in your soul the words of the third verse of O Little Town of Bethlehem? How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given so God imparts to human hearts the glorious love of heaven. No one discerns God's coming, but in this world of sin, where yearning souls long to behold, the dear Christ enters in. Have you noticed, have you seen how people are praising God? The celebration in Pakistan and around the world continues by many schoolgirls who will not allow extremists to take away their right of education. They follow fearlessly in the path of their teenage classmate and example to all, Malala Yousafzai, the youngest ever Nobel Prize, re Prize recipient awarded for her advocacy work for girls' education in the face of oppressive and brutal beliefs. We can see in our own communities a variety of ways people praise God as they serve through programs and efforts meant to share and care for others. One of the greatest gifts we have learned to offer is our presence and food when neighbors, family, or friends suffer a death of a loved one or in the throes of some catastrophic or long-term disease in what can only be considered a most amazing effort, the town of Wakanda, population 300, it's just about an hour west and a little south of here, the people of its surrounding rural area joined those 300 and raised over $140,000 to help one of their families 
when a young grandfather succumbed to a fast-growing terminal cancer this fall. And they harvested his crop. And they now encourage his survivors. Contributions to Heifer International or similar organizations provide people dignity as they become self-supporting, such as sharing the dream in Guatemala, and are able to educate their children and build medical health clinics, and then, in the spirit of paying it forward, they help another in their village to achieve the same opportunities, or the village that is, near, is nearby. Lunch is served, the mobile food pantry, the banquet, downtown and west sites, and the public school's angel fund all help connect people who understand the importance of regular nutrition in the successful performance of daily tasks. You see, Christmas proclaims the fullness of human life and urges us to live large in God's grace. Earth is chock full of God's glory. We are urged to make no small plans, but to live in eager anticipation that God will provide us with more than we can ask or imagine. So, how can we best praise and give glory to God in this year ahead? Well, you'll be happy to know it's not necessary for you to answer that question in this moment, because today is a gift, a gift of time to think about our individual response to that question and to prepare. But don't take too long. As we ponder between now and New Year's Day, the day we believe is a point to resolve and to start anew, let us hear again the paraphrased words of Paul's letter to the Colossians, so that we too will be ready in our hearts and minds. Accept that God loves you deeply and completely, always has and always will. And you can best express your gratitude for such a great love by clothing yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, forgiving each other, but above all, clothe yourselves in love. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, and be thankful to God in everything you say and do. Amen. So now, it's your opportunity. Who would like to be first? Yes. 143. And which verses? You can select two. Okay. 143. All of them. Let's do um, one and two.
28, verses 1 and 4. verses and I invite you to stand for that one.
It is God who gathers us here today in love and grace and offers us this moment to collect our thoughts as the year comes to an end and to know to rest in the knowledge that God continues the work of peace within and through us. So let us now pause in a moment of silence as we prepare ourselves for this time of prayer. Let us pray. God of all, you are the one who called this world into being, and we acknowledge that you have no equal. Yet, you want to share your strength with those who are powerless. You ache to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up the wounds of the lost and rejected people of this world. Such extravagant love leaves us speechless. But you gave it human form and shape in the person of Jesus, in whom your promises of healing and empowerment were fulfilled. We give you thanks and praise for blessing our lives in this way. And we pray through the presence of the Holy Spirit, we too can become bearers of hope and love to those whose lives are filled with despair and hopelessness. Today, we offer our prayers for those who we hold in our thoughts and within our being. And we offer our prayers, both spoken and in silence, as today we pray for the family of Betty Nyquist. We pray for Jean and Alan, Kathy and Marge, for Alan and Lori, and Wally and Mary. We pray for Fred and Betty, Kelly and Annetta, for Kelly and Kathy and Kim and Nancy, for Sarah and Taylor, for the Kobayko family and Carolyn. We pray for Jean and Dolly, for Melissa and Jared and their unborn baby, for Julie and Suzanne and Gretchen, and John and Kathy. Our prayers are for Marge and Ute and Dave and Jean, for Chris and Nancy, for Dakota Case and his family, for Wayne and Charlie, for Merwin and David O'Hara and his family. May this time of worship be a true expression of our desire to praise you, O God, for the many ways in which you bless us. May our lives reveal our gratitude in all we think and do and say. For we pray this now in Jesus' name as we join our voices in the prayer he taught his disciples when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, One of the ways we offer praise to God is through the sharing of our time, talents, and financial gifts. Christmas invites us to be a generous people in this day and in every day. This morning you are invited to bring your offerings. That of could be your offering envelope, or perhaps it will be your God's Hands card, or maybe it will be both. Your God's Hands card ways in which you offer yourself in service in this place and beyond, through prayer and through support of one another, and to bring it forward and place it in the basket that will be here in front of the altar. If you are, would choose to remain seated, an usher will come and can receive your offerings where you are seated. 
May we offer all that we are and all that is a continuation of God's love come down to earth as our gifts are presented in a spirit of generosity and hope. Gracious God, in simple trust, we bring our gifts and feel the strength of your spirit that calls us to share our lives and become hope for a longing world. May we know the joy and peace that comes from sharing all that we are and all that we have in thanksgiving for all we have received. In Christ's name we pray. Always be thankful. 
And whatever you do or say, let the hope and peace of the Christ child live in your hearts and inform your lives. And may the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit strengthen and encourage you as you go out from here to live lives of gratitude and service today and every day. Amen.